Good day students, welcome to MathGodServe.com where we don't just solve, we teach. In this clip we're going to be going over problems 1 to 5 of the June 2016 Algebra 2 Trig New York Regents exam. If you have any questions about any um, problems we're doing, just feel free to ask your question in the comment section below and we'll be glad to provide you with support. Alright, let's take a look at question number 1. We ask the expression 3 fourths root negative 80 is equivalent to now one thing you want to recall concerning finding the radical or the root of negative numbers is that when you have the square root of a negative number that negative comes out of the radical symbol as the letter i okay because um, i square is equal to negative one so anytime you have the square root of a negative number that i that negative comes out of the radical as an i okay so let's keep that in mind now uh, we are to find what's equivalent to the expression 3 over 4 root negative 80. Now let's take a look at the minus here first. Based on what we talked about here, uh, what will this minus come out of the radical as? This minus will come out of the radical as an i. Okay, so an i will be multiplying this 3 fourths. And then uh, we're going to break down this 80. Okay, so let's extract the radical piece and then we're going to break it down completely. So we have negative 80, the minus comes out as an i, and then we're going to decompose 80 into a product of primes. Why are we using primes? Because we're looking for factors that repeat, and any factor that repeats, we can take the square root and that. Uh, factor comes out as just one as opposed to double. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down. Let's think about this. What's a prime number that goes into 80? Um, since it ends in 0, 8 to 0, that's an even number. So 2 goes into every even number. So we can take out 2. And then we're left with uh, what? 40. This is still even. Take out 2. Left with 20. This is still even. Take out another 2 left with 10, this is still even, take out another 2, and you're left with 5. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pair them up, okay? Every pair can be rooted to get just 1. So what is the square root of 2 times 2? 2 times 2, the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2. As you recall, the square root of 4 is 2. You have another two twos repeating here. When you take the square root of them, guess what? They come out as just 2. Now take a look at the 5. It's by itself. So the square root of 5 is just root 5. Root 5 does not have a partner to break out of the radical symbol with, so it stays behind. Okay? So the square root of negative 80 becomes the minus comes out as an i, and then we have 2 times 2, these two 2's that broke out, and the 5 stays behind. Okay, so that becomes 4i rad 5. So we're going to replace this radical piece and then we're going to um, put 4i rad 5, okay? So let's um, erase this right here. <clears throat> this entire problem now becomes uh, 3 over 4 was the coefficient of the radical before times 4i root 5. Now, how are we going to resolve these two, the product of this fraction and this number? We can express 4i as a fraction over 1. Now, we can cross-reduce where possible. 4 goes here 1, 4 goes here 1. 3 times i is 3i, root 5. There goes your final answer, option number 1. All right, let's take a look at number 2. It says, in triangle RST, measure of angle S is 135. Side R measures 27, side T measures 19. What is the area of triangle RST to the nearest tenth of a square unit? Now, anytime you're working with a geometry problem presented in text format, uh, what you want to do is you always want to give yourself a visual. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sketch of this situation and determine the right formula to use for the problem solving process. Okay? So, um, angle S is 135 so we're gonna put it right here so this is 135 
Side R is right here, little r. 27 is bigger than T, so this is going to be big R. Side T is 19, so this is going to be big T, and this is going to be little s. We are asked to find the area. What type of triangle is this? This scenario is a side angle side triangle. Now, whenever you're given two sides and an included angle, there's a special formula that can be used to determine the area, okay? So let's take a look at what that formula is. The formula, I call it the SAS formula for finding area. So the area of a triangle in this format <coughs> is basically one half of the side times the side times sine of the included angle. Okay? So the alphabet doesn't really matter. Um, just keep track of the size and included angle. If you get them in order like this, then you can use this formula without any problems. Okay? So if we apply this formula to this situation here, we have the area equals one half times the first side 19 times the second side, 27, times sine of what? The included angle. Okay, we just input this entire expression into our calculators. So we have um, one half, so that's side 19, times 27, times the sine of the angle 135, and we get our area measure 181.3728 so is 181.3728 I believe let me pull it up again 28 okay actually it's 29 but in this problem we're asked to round it to the nearest tenth which is two decimal places so the area is basic I'm sorry one decimal place so the area is going to be 181 point um, we're rounding it to the first decimal place right here, the tenth place. The number behind is five or greater, so we're going to carry one. We're going to round up, add one, two, three to get four. 181.4 square units. Answer is option number two. All right, let's take a look at number three. It says the expression root five over seven minus root five is equivalent to so we have four options here. Okay, so what we're doing uh, here is basically simplifying radicals, okay? So how do we simplify a radical expression of this nature? Um, well, we're going to have to rationalize the denominator, okay? So we have root five divided by seven minus root five. Remember, you may not have a radical as a denominator component. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. So the question is, what is the conjugate of seven minus root five? To find the conjugate, you simply take the opposite of the middle sign, okay? So we're gonna multiply by seven plus root five on the top and on the bottom, okay? Seven root five plus root five and seven plus root five on the top and bottom. Now we're gonna multiply out um, on the numerator and the denominator. Now, when you multiply the numerator, well, let me write it in this way so that you don't get confused. We have root five being multiplied by seven plus root five. And then in the denominator, you have uh, seven minus root five times seven minus root five. Okay, so in the numerator, you just distribute this root five to both of them, and then you're going to have seven root five plus, what is root five times root five? Root five times root five is root 25, which reduces to just five, okay? So this becomes five. Let me show you here, so root five times root five, that's root 25. What is the square root of 25? It's five. All right. Now, in the denominator, you're going to dis you're going to foil it out first, outer, inner, last. Let's go ahead and, and do that. <coughs> so we're going to have um, seven times seven. 
Well, actually, I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be a plus because we have plus here and a plus here. Okay, perfect. So 7 times 7 is 49. And then 7 times um, positive root 5 is plus 7 root 5. And then minus root 5 times 7 is negative 7 root 5. Plus root 5 times minus root 5. Minus times pl plus signs of difference. You have a minus. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25 again, which just reduces to what? To 5. Okay? Now, if you notice earlier, this is a uh, product and sum of the same thing, right? So you have a difference here and this is a sum. So if you just if you multiply it, it's kind of like a difference of squares. You're going to see that result manifesting itself in a minute. So uh, this becomes 7 root 5 plus 5. And then notice one cool thing that happens in the denominator. Whenever you're multiplying a sum and a difference of two terms, the middle term always do what? They're always opposite, so they cancel out. You see that? And then you end up with a difference of squares. The first term square minus the second term square. Okay, what is 49 minus 5? 49 minus 5 is 44. The answer for question number uh, 3 is option number 3. All right, let's take a look at question number four. It says, a, a multiple choice test has four possible choices for each question. A person guesses on 10 questions. What is the probability that the person gets exactly eight questions correct? Now, this is a binomial probability question. And in order to be successful in this question, you need to know two things. First of all, you need to know the formula. And secondly, you need to know exactly what each component of the formula represent. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the formula first and then talk about what each component um, represents. So the formula is n choose r times probability of success raised to the r times probability of failure raised to the n minus r. Okay. So we have four variables here. That's a lot to remember. So let's go over what each represents. Okay, so n is basically the number of trials. And then when you carry out n trials um, in binomial probability problem, there are certain outcomes that you desire. Okay, so r is that number. r represents the number of desired outcomes. So like in this problem, the desired outcomes is correct questions. Okay. And then P is the probability that that desired outcome will happen. So that is probability of success. All right. And then the uh, Q piece represents, uh, it can also be written as one minus P and that is the probability of failure. Remember the probability of success plus the probability of failure always equals one. Okay. All right. So this is what the different components mean. So we have to be really careful here when labeling our components so we don't get anything confused. Okay. In this problem, how many trials are there? How many questions are there on the test? N represents the total number of questions. We have 10. Okay. Now this person desires to get how many correct? exactly eight. Okay, so the number of desired outcomes um, is eight. Now, what is the probability of getting every problem right? What's the probability of getting one problem correct out of the eight? Well, it's a multiple choice test question that has four choices. So out of four choices, what are the odds of getting it correct? It's one correct answer out of four. One out of four is probability of success. Okay, so if one of one over four is the probability of success, the probability of failure Q is simply one minus the probability of success one fourth, which is three fourths. All right. So all we simply do is plug in all these components into your formula, and you are good to go. Okay. So let me put it up here so we can easily carry out our comparison and choose R. 
probability of success to the r times probability of success raised to the n minus r. Carry out our substitution. So we have 10, choose 8. Probability of success, 1 over 4. Um, number of desired outcomes to the 8th. And then failure is 3 over 4 raised to the second power. Answer for number 4 is option number 2. Alright, let's take a look at uh, question number 5, the last in this review installment. Uh, it says 2 times the sum from n equals 3 to 6 of cosine pi over n minus 2 equals. Now this problem involves the use of two concepts. First of all, you need to understand how to use the discrete sum. Um, to compute, to determine terms of a um, summation expression written in condensed format. And secondly, you need to know how to use your unit circle uh, common angles to determine what a trig function is. All right. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this um, summation in expanded form. Okay. This is known as a condensed format. This is condensed. So we're going to write it out in an ex, um, in an expanded format, and then we're going to use our unit circle ratios to determine what it is. All right. So we're going from three to six. So we're going to basically input these n values into uh, this n and this um, argument here, and determine what the outputs are. Okay. So we're going to go from n equals three. This is the start. You start here from the bottom. And this is where you what? Stop. So we're going to plug in n equals 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay? So let's go ahead and write this in expanded form, starting from n equals 3. From n equals 3, we have cosine pi over, instead of n, we have 3 minus 2. Okay? So if we work this out, we have cosine of pi, 3 minus 2 is 1, which is cosine pi. All right, moving right along, n equals uh, 4. We have cosine of pi over 4 minus 2. And that gives us cosine of 4 minus 2 is 2, so it's pi over 2 like that. Moving right along, n equals 5. The same procedure, just substitute 5 for n in that um, cosine expression there. So 5 minus 2, that's cosine of pi over 3. Last but not the least is n equals 6. So we need cosine of pi over 6 minus 2. Okay, so that's going to be cosine of pi over 4. Alright, so let's write this in expanded format. So the original problem that we had, um, so let's not forget the 2. We have 2 times the discrete sum from n equals 3 to 6 of cosine pi over n minus 2. This nice little condensed expression here is the same is the same thing as uh, cosine pi. Let's not forget the 2. 2 times cosine pi plus cosine pi over 2 plus cosine pi over 3 plus cosine pi over 4. Okay? Okay, now um, there are two ways you can do this problem. Um, you can do this using your unit circle ratios, or you can use your calculator, okay? So let's assume that you don't know your unit circle ratios. I'm going to use the quick way, the shortcut. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to plug in this into my calculator, and um, I'm going to get an answer in decimal, decimal format, and then I'll compare my options here to see which one is equal to that um, result that I get. Okay, now for the calculator um, approach, what you need to remember is that these angular measures are in radians. Okay, so if you want to calculate, um, evaluate trigonometric expressions when the angular arguments are radian, 
formats, you have to make sure that your calculator is set to radian mode. Okay, so press mode and switch it from degrees to radians first before you start. All right, so I have it in the in radian format, and I'm just going to enter all of this into my calculator. So I have two times cosine pi plus cosine pi over two plus cosine pi over three plus cosine pi over four and there goes your answer right there now um, what you can do is take a look at these options you have here some of you could already tell what the answer is if you know what rat 2 is how if you have rat 2 memorized you should know that rat 2 is uh, 1.4142 and if you subtract 1 from it that tells you that this is your answer but let's assume that you didn't know that that's the case so what you're going to do is you're going to enter each option into the calculator to see which gives you 0.4142 okay let's start with option 1 negative parenthesis 2 plus root 2 close that close that divided by 2 enter that doesn't work that's not the answer I'm looking for let me write down my answer because my calculator is gonna stop moving in a second so let me write down the answer that we desire uh, approximately 0.4142 so we are basically entering the different options we have to see which gives the, the correct result, okay? All right, let's go to number two, negative two plus rad two that that's wrong. Now option three. Option three is kind of like well I can do that here. I was thinking about a different calculator. Okay, parenthesis one plus root two Another thing about this shortcut is you have to be extremely proficient with your calculator, okay? Or else you're going to uh, make mistakes. Okay, number three is wrong, so this should be the correct answer. Hopefully. Bam, that's exactly what we want, okay? So our answer is option four. If we wanted to use our, our calculator, if we want to be lazy, you know, or we don't remember our ratios. Now, let me show you the other way of doing this, okay? Now, this is a long way. First of all, you, when you're looking for cosine pi and cosine pi over 2, you can take advantage of the graph. You need to remember what your cosine graph looks like, okay? So, cosine graph looks something like this. Let me sketch it for you. Just one period. So, the cosine function is like a cup. It's like that, like that, and all the way there. At the center is pi and over here is pi over 2. What this graph tells me is that cosine of pi, I didn't draw that correctly, cosine of pi is the minimum. And do you know what the minimum is for the parent cosine function? The minimum is negative 1 and the maximum is 1. So 2 cosine pi is uh, negative 1 plus Cosine pi over 2, guess what? Is 0, dead in the center. 0. Plus, now what is cosine pi over 3 and cosine pi over 4? If you have your unit circle ratios memorized, you will know that um, cosine pi over 3 is 1 half and cosine pi over 4 is um, root 2 over 2. But let me show you one neat little trick that can help you remember this. If you're taking high level classes like calculus or pre calc, it's really important that you know how to do this because you might not be allowed to use a calculator and you get stuck. Okay? So uh, we have 0, pi over uh, 6, pi over uh, 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. These are the unit circle reference angles starting from 0 all the way to 90 degrees. You must know these angles um, and your values by heart in order to do well when you get to higher level math, okay? All right, so we have these right here. Now, how do we fill in this table? What I'm looking for is the sine and cosine of these values, and then we're going to use it to answer the question, all right? So, um, <coughs> the, the cosine, we're going to put cosine first. Cosine is the 
x coordinate of course and sine is the y coordinate. Also knowledge of this chart can really help you to generate the unit circle from memory without much work. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Now I'm going to take advantage of some patterns that occur on this chart. First one you need to remember is it goes 0, 1, 0. And at the end at pi over 2 these two actually reverse. You see a 1, 0 here it becomes 0, 1. Okay, now you start from your sign. This is as easy as 1, 2, 3. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3. And over here you reverse that pattern. 1, 2, 3. And then you proceed to divide everything by 2, divide 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 by 2. And lastly, you take the square root of the numerators. What's the square root of 3? It's root 3. What's the square root of 1? 1. Leave that alone. What's the square root of 2? Root 2. Square root of 2? Root 2. Square root of 1? 1. Just leave that alone. Square root of 3 is root 3. Okay? So just remember root 1 is equal to 1. Guess what? We have essentially created the unit circle ratios, the coordinates for your unit circle. Okay? Now, we're going to use this to help us out in this problem. What is cosine of pi over 3? Cosine of pi over 3, as you can see, is 1 half. And then cosine, well, let me show you what I just did so you don't get confused. All right, so this is pi over 3 right here. And then this is cosine. And they intersect right here. So the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. It's like you're using an antiquated multiplication chart. You know, where do they intersect? Pi over 3 and cosine intersect here, so that's 1 half. What is cosine of pi over 4? Cosine and pi over 4 intersect right here, so you have root 2 over 2. The beauty of all this work is that you do not need a calculator to do it. Okay? And if you have this chart memorized, you can whip this out in seconds. It doesn't take that long. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this out. So we have 2 times. Now, we have fractions, so we have to write everything as a fraction. Drop 0 out because it doesn't affect the answer. Now, just to make my life easy, I could just distribute this 2 across everything. Okay? So if I distribute the 2 across um, everything here, I'm going to have negative 2 plus, and then 2 times 1 half plus 2 times root 2 over 2. Why on earth do I do that? There are other ways you can do this, but the reason I did that is because I realized that, wait a minute, the denominators match with the 2, so when I distribute the 2, guess what? The denominators cancel out beautifully. Alright, so I'm left with uh, negative 2 plus 1 plus root 2 minus 2 plus 1 is negative 1 plus rad 2 and that was our answer option number 4 okay so this is the best way of doing it because it really shows you all the mathematics that's going on uh, in, the, in the background thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation we really appreciate it if you found the contents of this tutorial um, helpful to you please give us a thumbs up we really value your your feedback don't forget to subscribe for updates to the remainder of this review series. If you have any questions, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be glad to um, support you. More clips can be found on mathclusserve.com on the test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.